back to where the family homestead. Well, I've had a lot of people ask me about doing an update video on the Coleman UTV that we use all the time here. And so uh, I think now we've had this thing for a year. So I think now I can give you a pretty good, honest review on it. What I like about it, what I don't like about it. And uh, kind of go over some of the things people's asked me about on it. And uh, kind of give you a little more detail on certain parts of it. So uh, come on around with me and I'll show you this thing and uh, kind of give you my thoughts on it. Show you some of the things about it and uh, that people's asked questions about. And hopefully it can help you decide if, if this is something you might be interested in or not. All right, well this is it. This is the Coleman UT400. We bought this thing at Tri Supply about a year ago. If anybody's watched any of our other videos, we use this thing almost every day. Since we sold our other house, that's where the cow barn and the other barns at. They were over close to the road, but we moved back here in the backside of the pasture now. So we use this every day to go feed up in the afternoons. And of course I feed the other animals here in the back in the mornings. But uh, we use it every afternoon to go feed up, check on the chickens, uh, move hay with it. I mean, we feed with it. We use a lot to clean the chicken coop out. Well, I mean, we use it for almost everything that we'd use a small pickup or something for. But it's so much more convenient to have it just to hop in, run up and down the path back to the barns to the house. Uh, we use it to check fence lines. Use it. We've got a sprayer that we can mount in the back with a boom on it. We actually spray uh, pasture, fence lines, so uh, around the ponds. So we do something about every day with this thing. Uh, some sort of another but to jump right into it uh this thing has been a really good machine i saw a lot of bad videos on it which if you see many videos on it at all but about all of them i ever seen have been bad videos talking about this that and the other um it won't run fast enough it won't do this won't do that but for me our overall experience has been great with this thing uh knock on wood hadn't had any problems with it I did read on the dash in here about some of the issues people were having with the, would it not maybe like going full throttle, but if you can see right here, I'm gonna try to get in here on it. Um, it says, warning, both seatbelts must be buckled for the engine to run at full capacity. And you know, I don't like to wear a seatbelt uh, around here, cause I'm gonna be in and out of this thing a whole lot. So what I did is, you know, these seatbelts are mounted right up here at the top and they go down but i do have them both buckled right here in the middle but you can see that they're not in the way when we get in and out we don't have to mess with a seat belt grabbing arm or anything so what i did is i just took the buckle and ran it down behind the seat instead of going in front of the seat i ran it down behind the seat on both sides we came up from behind the seat and we've actually got them we got them buckled from behind the seat right there you can see where it comes under the seat there uh, they're both buckled engine runs at full speed if i need to uh there's no hesitations the seat belt buckles right over our way uh somebody can sit in the middle and it may not be real comfortable but it beats walking so that's how we fixed the uh engine not running at full speed of course this coleman sits outside all the time and um i don't have a shelter to put it in right yet that's gonna be in the plans working pretty soon i hope to get a shelter to put this under also my truck and other vehicle over there too trying to get them undercover a little bit out of the weather the sun it's getting to be summertime again now and the sun's gonna beat down on them of course this thing's made out of plastic the front end and all is made out of plastic and uh i don't know if you can see it good on the camera here or not but i'm gonna show you it does have a little spot there where she's been hot it's turned a little white there and it's got some little wavy lines in it i guess that's just where the heat's been on it but you know i bought this thing to to work and use not put in a car show and like I said, I try to take care of my equipment, but, uh, you know, sometimes you got to do what you can. And there again, you know, um, the wheels have got just a little bit of rust starting on them. Where it's been out in the weather. That's about all that is, but it's not terrible. And I could probably take a, a cleaner and clean that wheel back up pretty good. But now, hey, it's been a while since I've washed this thing. Now, I've been using it. I need to clean my trucks up too. So you can see it's been used. It's got dirt. It's got hay in the floorboard down there. So this actually has been used and um you can see i always keep stuff in the bed of it there's a feed sack uh feed sack there's got my boots in them keep them getting wet there's a watering can i always keep milk crate in the back with a few items in it uh you need a hammer and pairs and things like that every now and again but overall this has been a good good unit for us uh you can see my little trailer hitch down here at the bottom i've got to figure something out about that and uh, i'm sure there's a 
uh, hitch that goes in there that's supposed to be like it's supposed to be, but we actually use this thing to drag the pasture some. I got like a four foot drag hair uh, we put behind it. We drag the pasture to kind of knock the old cow pies down a little bit, kind of spread them out a little bit and make some fertilizer out of it. But uh, but we use this thing all the time quite a bit. It does have a dump bed on it. I'm not going to dump it right now. I can just pull this handle up, this bed of dump. If you look at some of our other videos, you'll see where we've actually uh, used it to haul dirt to the cow barn of her to put dirt inside the stalls to build them back up a little bit. Worked really good for that. So uh, let me just jump ahead and go ahead and explain some of the things that people has asked me questions about. I've had a lot of questions about the winch. It does come with the winch on the front. That is a, I don't know if I can get near to it or not. It's an EPW 3500 electric winch. That's a good winch. We've used it a few times, not a whole lot, but uh, I know I've got a bull. His name's Elmo, if you hadn't watched. He, uh, he likes to move things around quite a bit. We got some junk in the pasture that needs to be moved out anyway, but he likes to, I guess you could say, do his exercises out there with that stuff. And he actually pushes some stuff into the fence once in a while, so we have to go back. We got a couple big tree logs down there that he likes to roll around and play with. And we went a while back and had to use this winch to hook to one of those logs to get it off the fence and drag it back to the pile where it's supposed to be. But I've had people ask me questions about how this winch works. Um, if you can see on this side right here, it's got the clutch for the winches right here. You can see it says in here, it says out over here, and there's a switch right here, a little turn knob. You just turn that knob when it's on the end position. The winch is locked in, the gears is locked in, and you can't pull it out or in without the electric uh, switch on the inside. But if you're getting ready to hook this winch to something, you need some slack cable, you can turn it to that side right there where it says out. You just grab hold this cable right here and you just pull and that, that cable will come out every how long you want it to go out. As long as you pull, it'll come out. Just remember, when you get ready to winch that cable back in with, the, with electricity and the uh, power cord, switch it back to in because if you don't, that motor's gonna turn on this winch, but the cable's not gonna move in because the gear's not engaged. But while we're talking about the winch, I'm gonna come around right here and I'm gonna show you the switch that came with it. And, um, you know, it's, what are you doing? We ain't riding nowhere yet. We're riding a little bit. Okay, but, well, of course, I got some pliers and stuff in here too. And uh, it's got a right nice little toolbox on it in here. Uh, I I got, well, you can see all the junk I've got in there. I've got some box cutters, some ribbon to tie on the fences, electric fence tester. Of course, you got a rag to wipe your hands with. Uh, another set of pliers, 10 snips, a uh, tape measure. But this thing comes with a nice switch. Get out of the way, Abby. This thing comes with a nice switch. That's uh, this is your, is your winch switch right here. Um, of course, I you know, song ping, but hey, it works. It does a good job. You got your out and your in. Like I say, out pushes it out, in draws it back in. It's got a right nice connector on the end of it right here. It's a, a three-prong connector right here that plugs in. And I'm gonna close this back. And I'm gonna try to get up here and show you where it's at. Uh, right here it is. Right here is the connector that it goes on. You just line up the prongs, you put it right in there. Uh, and it's got, a, I've never undone the cord a whole lot because most time, Kim, she will uh, work this from the inside of the unit. So I ain't got the, but it's got a long cord. I bet it's probably a, I don't know, 12, 15 foot cord maybe. So if you got to be outside doing something, you got plenty of cord to be standing outside if you need to do something by yourself and take care of it. But that's your cord. Hey, it comes in an old bag with little bubbles on it. And I'm uh, surprised Kim hadn't popped all the bubbles yet because she's like a little youngin' when it comes to stuff like that. If I, if I ain't careful, she's here trying to mash these little bubbles and pop them. Uh, put my stuff back in here. But uh, like I say, this has been a, a good little dash pocket here. It's got magnets on it that actually holds it closed. And they actually hit these screws right here just mounted in the top. Hey, it stays shut really good. So while I'm on the inside, if Abby will quit trying to get in the way. But while I'm on the inside, we'll go over the dash real quick. And of course I hadn't washed it like this, it's dirty. So let me wipe it down a little bit so you can see it. But uh, it's got pretty nice displays in here. It shows you. Uh, how fast you going, what your RPMs are. And I can go ahead and tell you, uh, I have had this thing almost 40 miles an hour before, but 
I think it'd go a little faster than that, but I don't like to run it too hard. I didn't want to run it flat wide open and see what it would do. Um, Cause my luck, it would blow up and then I'd be stuck. So anyhow, uh, I switched this thing on for you so you can see what the dash looks like when it lights up. But there's the dash lit up. It shows up here. Uh, it's got your uh, two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive stuff right here on the top. There's your fuel gauge. I've had some questions about the fuel gauge. Some people said their fuel gauges are not working, and they may not be. I don't know if they are or not, but uh, i tell you what confused me when I first got this thing. When I got it, it, it had almost a, well, I guess it had a full tank of gas in it when I got it, which I was surprised. So all these little indicators right here were all the way up to the full mark. There's a gap in it now because I don't have about maybe a little or half a tank in it now. But anyhow, when I first got it, I had assumed that since that one was red and these were white looking and all up to the full mark, I thought that as they went down, the red was the actual fill level of it. Well, really, the red is only right there. When you fill this thing up, those lights turn on here and they go up to the full mark, they're white instead of red. And as you drive it, they do disappear. So for the longest time, I thought my gauge wasn't working either, but then after a while, that one light finally did go out, and um, so I kind of figured it out. Anyway, it's got a clock on it. Um, it's set on military time. I need to switch it over to regular time, I guess. But it shows the mileage done for that. So you can see I've got 369 miles on this thing. Um, and I guess that's a lot of riding back and forth between pastures and fence lines and everywhere else. You know, I'd hate to have to... Used to, I was walking all that many times. So uh, over the last year... Got your trip button right here, which shows you I never set the trip on. It's 369.3 miles on it. Uh, there's the hours I have have on it. It's 86.1 hours. This thing's been running. And uh, so I just leave it like that. You got your water light, your hazard lights, your park, park and brake. Then you got your forward, neutral, and reverse. And when you put this thing in gear, which is the shift lever right here, up is for forward. It will turn that light red go back down to neutral and when you go back it goes to reverse and those lights light it for you when you when you're moving you got your seat belt light there you got your oil light and your beta light there's your uh turn signal letting know it's on there's your high beam letting know it is on this thing does come with um all the turn signals headlights brake lights it's got reflectors on the sides it came with the top the windshield the side mirrors it came with the winch on the front uh like I say, it came with everything that I would have had to add it on later if I'd have bought another brand. And uh, with the price point, we paid for this thing. When I bought this thing, they were like, I think it was $7,000. I think they're almost 10 now. Uh, you know, of course, everything in the world's going up. But at the time, these were around $7,000, a little bit less that we got them. And that was for the entire unit top windshield mirrors signal lights brake lights headlights winch and everything and again if i'd have had to, i would have paid probably at the time i bought this if i'd have bought another brand it would have been about fifteen thousand base and then you'd have to put a top on it all these other accessories and i don't even know how much all that would have costed so anyhow um going back on the dash here's your here's your gear selector forward neutral reverse you got your little switch right here this is your two-wheel drive four-wheel drive switch right here it's just a push button you mash it in, it switches, and I'm gonna go ahead and do it so y'all can see it, especially with the dash. I'm gonna mash the button. You can probably hear the actuator go over. Actuator went over. And then, well, I didn't mash it all the way. There we go. And now that light appears flashing, if I get my big fat finger right away, and show that light's flashing, that means it's in four wheel drive now. You can flip the switch here over, and there's your uh, differential lock right there. Differential lock is not in right this minute, but if you mash this button right here, you heard the actuator. And once you drive up a little bit, you'll see this one right here. There'll be an X at the top and the bottom of uh, that little drive shaft on this side. It'll show you that the differential lock is in and you're in and all four wheels will be pulling. So, and you can't switch one without the other. You can put it four-wheel drive without doing the rear differential, but if I'm going to put it four-wheel drive, I'm going to do both. So I'm going to take it back out of that. I'm going to flip my toggle back over, and I'm going to put it back in two-wheel drive. And Abby don't know what in the world that... What was that noise? You hear that? 
so there's your four-wheel drive and your differential lock. So this it's pretty simple. I mean, if, if I can figure it out, anybody can figure it out. There's your 12-volt outlet to plug something in if you'd have a charger or some kind of another. And uh, sure, they'll probably add more stuff like that to them later on with the newer ones or whatever. But there's your key switch right here. There's your horn button right here. You just pull back on it. I'll tell you what, let me blow the horn for you so you can hear it. There's your horn button right there. Uh, moving on over here, there's your steering wheel. Slide over, Abby. Let me slide a little bit. Uh, but then you got over here, you have got your, your turn signals right here, or just like in a vehicle. You got your headlights right here, uh, and you can turn them on that way. You got parking lights or headlights. Then you can push the stick forward and it turns on your high beams or goes right to low beams. Uh, and when you do switch the key off, if you leave the headlights on by accident, when you switch this key off, the headlights go off so you ain't got to worry about killing the battery by leaving your headlights switched on. Of course, there's your gas pedal and your brake pedal. Gas pedal, brake pedal. And uh, of course, you got your uh, emergency brake there and you got your emergency brake release right here. You match the emergency brake down, it's, it's locked down. It's just pull that down and uh, pops your really emergency brake back up. So that's pretty much the inside of it. And we'll crawl back out and do a little quick walk around, kind of show you some things. But there again, uh, we've had really good luck with this thing. It's been good. I did change the oil and filter in it. I did look online to see how many hours need to be on it before you change the oil and filter for the first time. I, I do have a video of me change the oil and filter because I couldn't find one anywhere. So I will try to put a link to that somewhere in this video, maybe right on here somewhere if I can find out how to do that. Or if nothing else, I'll, you know, just look back through old videos and you'll see because it, it says oil change in the Coleman. But um, it was not that bad to change. It's got a, it's actually got skid plates under this thing. I'll tell you what, let me see if I can crawl up under and show you what that looks like. They're not metal skid plates, but they're heavy plastic skid plates under this thing. So uh, right there they are, and it goes from front to back. So everything under this unit is covered with a skid plate, which I thought was pretty neat for the price point of this thing. They got all your undercarriage covered, and uh, like I can say, what are you doing back there? Standing in the shade. All right. But I thought that was pretty neat that they would include that, you know, for protection under the bottom. But the only thing is, you know, once you get ready to change your oil, you do have to take that one skid plate off, which is not bad. It's only got four bolts on it in. You knock it right out. You can get right to your oil plug, take it right in and out. Oil filter. Oil filter's a little bit of a barrier to get to. Uh, matter of fact, I may try to pull this seat up and kind of show you under here while I got you. You just to pull the seat out. You just pull it up like that on both sides. It's kind of hard to do one-handed, but I'm going to get it. There we go. I think I'm going to get it. My seat belt is holding me down. Because I ain't got them where they're supposed to be. <clears throat> Hold on a minute. Let me put you down. I'll be right back with you. Okay. It did take two hands. So, uh, hey, while I'm here, on this side under the seat, here's your battery. Uh, and you can see I got these little connectors hooked to it all the time, which works out good. Uh, this is how I hook my, my sprayer up when I spray for... Uh, the fence lines, the ditches and everything. I actually just leave leave the cable run right under the bottom, right up here. Here's my switch. And then this here just actually plugs into the top of my sprayer where that little electric motor is from my sprayer. So I just, instead of having to take the seat out every time and put it back, I just leave that right there and uh, keep my old handy dandy milk crate right there with it. And it stays right there all the time. And it don't, it don't really get in the way anywhere. But, um, but here's the underside of the seat. And let me go around to the other side and I'll show you where to try to show you where the filters and stuff are. All right. And the only other thing I don't like about it is I'm gonna try to get you down in here to it. Is uh let's see. Right there it is. Right there's the oil filler cap. Right there. That's how you check the oil and put oil back in it. So the only thing I don't like about this thing is how you got to check the oil in it you got to take the seat off to check the oil i wish it was a little easier maybe around the back side where the bed dumps where you could actually maybe dump the bed and check your oil in it but hey that's just the way it is that's what we got so we just had to deal with it maybe they'll change it later on in the future but here's your gas tank on this side that's what all this stuff is right here there's your fuel pump and all down in there so if you did have to replace a fuel pump or something hey you're right here at it. it's not that bad 
And uh, of course, there's your fuel cap. It goes right here. And uh, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna latch this tailgate back and I'm gonna go ahead and dump it for you. So I can show you where that oil filter is. I'm gonna slide my, oh, she got water in there for them plants, I guess. I'm gonna slide my stuff to the back so when I dump it, it don't slide everywhere making noise. So anyhow, I might as well go ahead and show you how to dump the bed. You just pick it up right here, pick up on this latch, and it's assisted, it pops right up. You know, it's easy to do, and it, you just push it back down to close it. But while we're under here, I want to show you, here's the engine. It's a Hyson HSUN engine. Thing runs good. Like I said, I don't have any, never had any issues with it. Um, I did change the oil and filter in it, and the oil filter is right there, about, well, right there, about middle of your screen. If I can touch it right there, it's, well, I can point to it. Right there it is, that's your oil filter right there. It's a little bit of a booger to get to uh, with the ratchets and the oil filter change wrench I have, because you've got to kind of work it in a little bit to get to it. But if I had one of those type of field wrenches that goes right on the end and, that, and you can put a ratchet on it that actually ratchets it off, I think that'd be a lot better. And I'm gonna do that next time. Um, while we're back here, here's your rear end and everything. There's your braking system right there. There's your brake pads for the braking system. And uh, I don't think they'll be too hard to change. I hadn't ever done that yet. I hadn't had the need to yet, but one day I probably will. But so here's the under bottom, <laughs> under bottom, who says that? So here's under the bed, shows the engine, that kind of thing. Here's what the other side of the engine looks like. Um, like I say, it's, it's a good little engine. I hadn't had any problems with it. I, now I'll tell you what I do. Um, and this is shaft driven. I, you can see the drive shaft right there. There's no chains, no belts. That's another thing I liked about this. It's a shaft drive. It goes right from the engine to the rear end, the transmission, everything. It's all connected through shaft, as far as I know. I don't know if there's a belt anywhere else, but I do like a drive shaft better than I do the belts. Um, just my preference. I ain't saying nothing wrong with the belts, but I just, I like to have just more than a belt for whatever reason. Anyhow, so here's the other side of the engine. All right, but there's the cylinder right there that holds the bed. It kind of assisted back up and you just had to push it back down. And uh, you can kind of see where I got my, my line for my sprayer up here. So I got to be careful when I put the bed back down just because of that. But you got a big old grab handle right here. You just push it back down and I ain't gonna slam it. Let me pull my, pull my cord up first. You just push it back down, there you go. Slide my stuff back up to the front for this evening. I'm gonna get ready to go feed. Hadn't rained lately, so I hadn't needed my rubber boots, but I got them under there and got the feed sack on top to kind of keep some of the water out of them. Um, all right, well, there you go. Uh, a, a year's worth of update on the old Coleman there. Uh, like I say, it's really done a good job for us. Like I say, the only dislike I have found, I even kind of dislike, is where the oil plug is, where you check your oil and stuff at. Other than that, it's, it's other than that, it's just. That's a little aggravating you have to take the seat off check your oil in it because I do like to check my oil every so often to make sure everything's good. But uh, I hope I covered some of the points on the winch and some other things that people have been asking about. If I hadn't, leave me a comment down below if you got any other questions about anything on this thing. I'd be glad to answer them best I can. But like I say, uh, I guess it all boils down to what I recommend the Coleman UT400 for anybody to purchase that's going to do stuff like we do here. Uh, I'd say yeah. Like I say, for the price point, even though they've gone up now from what they were when I bought this one, uh, with all the accessories that come on it, I mean, I didn't even mention the big fr front bumper on this thing, but that thing there, she's nice now. She's she's a pretty heavy bumper right there. Um, like I say, uh, I don't know what the price of the other name brands are right now, but I'm sure if the Coleman's have gone up that much, I'm sure they have as well. And I don't know, unless they've changed their policies, if they've added any extras on or not. But like I say, for the money, when all you get for this, um, I do remember what I was gonna say a while ago when I was on the backside of this thing. I've never had a problem with it running, uh, but I have read the recommendations. I always burn the cheapest gas in whatever I can drive and I can find, with, especially what gas prices are now. But I tell you what, with this thing, it recommended like the mid-octane or the higher octane in it. I think it's the mid-octane. I had to look back up again. But that's what I put in it. I put in the 89, 89 octane and uh, I've never had a first problem with it starting, um, running. 
I mean, it's always doing good. Now, it may not start when I get ready to park it over here at the house in a few minutes after this video is over. But, uh, but like I say, using the higher octane fuel like it's recommended, uh, not had a problem with it filing plugs or sputtering or anything like that. It's always done fine. So there again, if, uh, if the question of this video is, would, would I buy another one or not? Yes, I would. Uh, I'm, and it's just like anything else. You may get a lemon every now and again, but, and normally I usually do, but on this one, I got lucky and, uh, it's been a good one. Not had any issues with any of it at all. It's always done everything I've asked it to do. And, uh, like I say, when I load this thing down with feed for the cows and the horses back here in the back, I mean, you can tell it's back there, but hey, it beats having to get a pickup truck out with diesel fuel being $5 and 35 cents a gallon here now. Uh, just running this little thing here back and forth, doing a little errands like that with it. But uh, I've hauled hay, hauled cow feed, hauled sprayers with it. I've got a, uh, I think it's a 40 gallon sprayer. It may be bigger than that, I'm not sure. It's a big one. This is some of the videos where I got the boom on the back. And um, like I say, it's hauled it with no problems. I had any issues with it. Like I say, um, I've been very satisfied with this whole unit. And uh, so if anybody's looking for something like this to use at their farm or their house or whatever they're going to do, I'd recommend it. Uh, we use it to work on fences. Hey, all these fences around here that we got, you're going to get a line to break somewhere or another. You're going to get a fence knob to break. Instead of getting the truck out and having to ride all the way down through the pasture looking fence knobs and checking the fence lines that's broke, this is the way to go. And I do have one little spot here in the pasture that's a little bit wet all the time. And uh, a truck, and I have got a tractor stuck back there before in it. Uh, and I carry this back there. It's a lot lighter than the truck and the tractor. It goes more places. It don't weigh as heavy and it don't get sunk down in the mud as bad. And when you lock that thing in four wheel drive and the rear differential's locked in that thing, hey, it goes through a lot of stuff. Um, I hadn't got it stuck yet. But I have been smart enough to not go into real bad spots. But uh, where I can't go with a truck or a tractor, I can go with this. And it makes things a lot easier for us. So anyway, hey, the wind's getting up. we got some storms coming in this evening. And I hope the video's, the, the sound quality is pretty good on this thing. But anyway, if you got any questions, comments, hey, feel free to put them down below. Hey, if you're new to the channel, hey, come on and join us and look at the other videos that we have. If you like anything to do with cows, horses, uh, dogs, cats, chickens hogs i mean anything like that uh gardening which i do a little garden we just planted our garden here a few a uh, couple weekends ago it's getting ready to come up some more videos on that but if you're into stuff like that and you like this video here hey tell everybody about it maybe they'll come on and watch some of it too and uh again hope you check out our other videos and uh if you do we hope to see you in the next video again we appreciate you joining us and uh we'll see you next time mm -hmm.